handle our finance what bible say how to handle and how to lead a holy financing let's read uh, luke chapter 6:38 look god us uh, luke chapter 6 verse 38 we read like this let's, let's repeat this word of god luke chapter 6 verse 38 give give and it will be given to you and it will be given to a you a good measure a good measure pressed down pressed down shaken together shaken together running over running over will be put into your lap will be put into your lap for the measure you give for the measure you give will be the measure you get back will be the measure you get back the financial matter in bible is just opposite to the worldly matter in the world the more you get you can amass wealth in bible the more you give you will get it give you will get this is the truth this is what we need to understand if you are ready to give the tithe if you are ready to give for pe- poor people if you are ready to help others you will get back because god is the owner of every wealth he knows whom to give he will give accordingly but those who are only trying to get it not ready to give they will even lose what they have let's read john chapter first john chapter 3 verse 17 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise to Jesus. Praise to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How does God's love abide in anyone? How does God's love abide in anyone? Who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? So God says God's love will not be in them and God the world's goodness good things of this world richness will not be in anyone who is not ready to help others if you are not ready to help others your financial bondage and problem will never leave you if you are not ready to help those who are in hell those who are in need around you your financial need will never be sorted out even if you don't have anything if you need to help somebody try to help in whatever way possible you will get back that is the finance financing in bible praise the lord praise the lord proverbs chapter 19 verse 17 proverbs chapter 19 verse 17 we read like this Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord. Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord. And will be repaid in full. And will be repaid in full. If you are helpful to the other poor people, God will give you repayment in fullness. That is why this is the secret of wealth, amassing wealth according to Bible. Secret. The secret of the world is try to cheat others and get money. But the secret of the Bible give generously to others the lord will give you repay in full praise the lord praise the lord matthew chapter 6 was 19 to 21 matthew chapter 6 was 19 to 21 we read like this jesus said to him jesus said to him if you wish to be perfect if you wish to be perfect go, go. sell your possessions sell your possessions and give the money to the poor and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and you will have treasure then in heaven then come follow me then come follow me The Lord says real richness is not in this world it is in heaven real richness is in heaven that is our true richness wealth let's read first timothy chapter 6 verse 17 to 19 first timothy chapter 6 verse 17 to 19 let's read as for those who in the present age are rich As for those who in the present age are rich command them not to be haughty command them not to be haughty those who are rich people don't be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of the riches or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of but riches. rather on god who richly provides us but rather on god who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment with everything for our enjoyment they are to do good they are to do good to be rich in good works to be rich in good works generous generous and ready to share and ready to share the storing up for themselves the store enough for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future the treasure of a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of the life that really is life so that they may take hold of the life that really is life all those who are wealthy prosperous and those who have got a lot of money and wealth remember this word of god first timothy chapter 6 verse uh, 17 to 19 b- b- keep it in your home read it again and again do accordingly so that you will be safe let's listen to the 7th commandment is you shall not steal 
praise the lord praise the lord you shall not steal let us read proverbs chapter 10 verse 2 and 3 proverbs chapter 10 verse 2 and 3 treasures gained by wickedness do not profit treasures gained by wickedness do not profit praise the lord praise the lord any treasure any money any amount which we gain through wickedness stealing cheating taking extra interest more than required and also bluffing saying lies or false advertisement or any kind of wickedness such kinds of treasures such kinds of income will never give any profit in our life treasures gained by wickedness do not profit but righteousness delivers from death but righteousness delivers from death the lord does not let the righteous go hungry the lord does not let the righteous go hungry but he thwarts the craving of the wicked but he thwarts the craving of the wicked praise the lord praise the lord my dear brothers and sisters this is very important for all of us stealing cheating others any kind of wrong way of ta- collecting money gaining treasures by wickedness will never profit there are so many people have this tendency of stealing shoplifting cheating others taking extra interest or uh, even fighting with your own siblings to get maximum family uh, ancestral ancestral properties and all the other things these are dangerous because the treasures gained by wickedness do not profit Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Praise you Jesus. Praise you Jesus. Let's read Luke chapter 12 verse 15. Luke chapter 12 verse 15 we read like this. And he said to them, and he said to them, take care. Take care. Be on your guard. Be on your guard. Against all kinds of greed. Against all kinds of greed. We have to be very careful about every kind of greed. and he says for once life does not consist in the abundance of possessions for once life does not consist in the abundance of possessions life doesn't mean we need maximum wealth life doesn't mean lot of property and money life doesn't mean prosperity there are so many people who are prospered wealthy but no happiness no joy so life doesn't mean all these things once life does not consist in the abundance of possessions Therefore the Lord says take care be on your guard against all kinds of greed Let's read Luke chapter 9 verse 25 Luke chapter 9 verse 25 we read like this Luke chapter 9 verse 25 what does it profit them what does it profit them if they gain the whole world if they gain the whole world but lose or forfeit themselves but lose or forfeit themselves So what is the point in collecting amassing wealth and money wealth prosperity through wickedness cheating stealing and all the other things even if we gain the whole world but lose our soul then we are lost everything psalm 37 verse 16 we read psalm 37 verse 16 we read like this psalm 37 verse 16 better is a little better is a little that the righteous person has that the righteous person has than the abundance of many wicked than the abundance of many wicked praise the lord praise the lord if it is little money or wealth that we have which we have collected in the right way that is better than having abundance of wealth through, which is collected through wickedness this is what the lord says praise the lord praise the lord ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 2 Let's read this word of God. The Lord is reminding us any kind of greed is dangerous. Those to whom God gives wealth, those to whom God gives wealth, possessions, possessions and honor, and honor, so that they lack nothing of all, so that they lack nothing at all. They desire that they desire. Yet God does not enable them to enjoy these things. Yet God does not enable them to enjoy these things. But a stranger enjoys them. But a stranger enjoys them. This is vanity. This is vanity. It is a grievous ill. It is a grievous ill. Though we collect a lot of money and everything but someone else will enjoy it. we work hard and we collect it our children enjoy it or they work hard and they get it and someone else enjoy it this is something a vanity 
therefore the lord says don't focus on the greed live your life a holy life you will enjoy the presence of god there is no other enjoyment greater than the presence of god let's read in the same chapter verse 9 Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 9 better is the sight of the eyes better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of desire than the wandering of desire this also is vanity this also is vanity and chasing after wind and a chase enough to win praise the lord praise the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus let's examine our conscience and see do we have a desire to amass wealth in the shortcut way are we trying our best to cheat others or through wrong ways lying and wickedness and any other methods trying to amass wealth are we going for gambling and shortcut ways to get maximum wealth in the short period let's examine our conscience and see do we have this tendency let's let us read this word of god many time many people think you know having prosperity or wealth is something which god hates no God also gives us prosperity wealth and health and everything does it mean that just because you follow Jesus you will have to be poor god never says that because there are so many followers of Jesus who are wealthy very prosperous and so prosperity is not something as sin or evil but at the same time collecting wealth in a wrong way and not using the wealth that is given by god for good things these are all not acceptable in front of god there are so many people whom god has blessed with prosperity but they use that prosperity for the goodness of the people and also the church and the money is not we should not live for money but money is used by human beings for glorification glorifying the lord praise the lord let's read proverbs chapter 10 verse 2 and 3 2 to 4 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Uh, let's read Genesis chapter 3 verse 19. Genesis chapter 3 verse 19 we read like this. Genesis chapter 3 verse 19. By the sweat of your face, by the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread. You shall eat bread until you return to the ground. Until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. For out of it you were taken. You are dust. You are dust. And to dust. And to dust you will re- you shall return. You shall return. The Lord says we should collect wealth and money prosperity not through any shortcut ways not so through any easy way but by the sweat of our face praise the lord praise the lord by working hard day and night so god has given us days god has, god has given us enough time to work hard and we work hard and that is how we need to amass wealth or we- and this such kinds of wealth is good for us and this wealth will be prosperous and it will be helpful for us and such kinds of wealth god is not against it god loves it praise the lord praise the lord let's read this word of god proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 we read like this the blessing of the lord makes rich the blessing of the lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it and he adds no sorrow with it if god blesses you you may become rich you may become prosperous you may become wealthy but and remember if it is your wealth and prosperity and all this money that comes through the right way and if it is coming from god and it is a blessing of god then he will not add sorrow in it there won't be any sorrow with it but there are so many people who amass wealth in the wrong way and in in ho- unholy way wicked way but all we sorrow is added to it the sorrow will never leave them one side lot of money but another side all we is intention crisis sorrow that is why bible says the blessing of the lord makes rich so just because you follow jesus doesn't mean that you will become poor or you should be become, becoming poor no not necessarily we should be open to both and sometimes the blessing of the lord makes us rich and such kinds of richness will not will not have any sorrow with it because it's a blessing of god praise the lord praise the lord let's read proverbs chapter 15 verse 16 proverbs chapter 15 verse 16 we read like this 
Better is a little with the fear of the Lord. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord. Than great treasure and trouble with it. Than great treasure and trouble with it. The Bible says it's better to have little, but at the fear with the fear of God. You have sincere fear of the Lord, love of God. You hate sin, and you have little money. That is better than having a huge treasure. Without fear of God, you have a lot of treasure. and then trouble also will be there with that because there is no fear of god that is tr- terrible life but there are so many people who are poor people with the fear of god they are living peacefully happy life that is better god says praise the lord praise the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus proverbs chapter 16 was 8 proverbs chapter 16 was 8 we read Better is a little with righteousness. Better is a little with righteousness than large income with injustice. Than large income with injustice. The Lord says it is better to get money, wealth, and power through righteous way, good way, holy way, straight way, than getting large and shortcut way of large amassing wealth of large amount of money, wealth, and income with injustice. stealing from others cheating others selling liquor and drugs and uh, evil smoking and cigarettes and all these kind of things selling these kinds of things you know many people say father in this place if you want to have income you need to sell alcohol and drugs and drinks otherwise you may not have even if you have a shop you need this alcohol bottles and drugs and drinks and smoking items otherwise you cannot get money Bible says it is better not to have money than getting these kinds of money. Better is a little with righteousness than large income with injustice. These kinds of money which we collect by selling these unholy things which are destroying so many families, so many individuals and their body which is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Such kinds of money will never bring any profit. but instead only sorrow and pain therefore better is a little with righteousness than large income with in- injustice let's examine our conscience and see do we have this tendency of selling unholy things just to get money bribing to get some things done very fast or cheating abusing or taking money extra and doing an un- un- injustice taking extra interest which is not allowed or any other methods let us beg for forgiveness and pardon from the lord and say lord i will never do this anymore i ask forgiveness from god for all these sins which i have committed in the past the lord will bless you proverbs chapter 21 verse 6 the having wealth in a wrong way and sinful way is dangerous for us we read like this the getting of treasures by a lying tongue the getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a fleeting vapor and snare of death is a fleeting vapor and a snare of death saying lies when you sell a product property saying lies hiding the mistakes hiding the damages hiding the problems connected to that property or things and then trying to get rid of it and get money or cheating others bluffing others such kinds of treasures are like a fleeting vapor and snare of death fleeting vapor means it just disappears very fast this kind of money will never stay with you there are sometimes people forging documents forging documents you don't have the degree but you create the certificate forged documents just to get the job and such kinds of lying tongue such kinds of wealth and money which we collect through wrong methods is like a fleeting vapor and snare of death and from this money we will never be able to use anything for good but it will be always a cr- problem for us unnecessarily wasting lot of money for unnecessary things because this money is not collected in the right way the getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a fleeting vapor and snare of death mark chapter 4 verse 19 we read like this mark chapter 4 verse 19 we read 
but the cares of the world but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth and the lure of wealth and the desire for other things and the desire for other things come in and choke the word come in and choke the and word and it yields nothing and it yields nothing so many families have lost their connection with god many families are going through a tough time in their life many families are not growing in holiness because the cares of the world and lure of wealth and desire for other things come in and choke the word there are so many families today initially when they started their spiritual life they were so holy they were so connected and they were so prayerful in the course of time in the process the cares of the world is they are so worried about the world worried about the future worried about their job worried about their money worried about worried about the day to day runnings of their life lure of wealth and desire to amass wealth desire to get pleasures of this world desire to get maximum comfort and all these things creep in of in their life and choke the word of god and now they have no time for word of god they have no time to listen to the word of god they have no time to read the bible they have even no time to spend time in the presence of the lord and therefore all these hard works will never yield anything therefore the lord says the cares of the world and the lure of wealth and the desire for other things come in and choke the word and it yields nothing let's read this word of god matthew chapter 13 verse 22 Matthew chapter 13 verse 22 we read like this as for what was sown among thorns as for what was sown among thorns this is the one who hears the word this is the one who hears the word but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word choke the word and it yields nothing and it yields nothing let's also read this word of god proverbs chapter 11 verse 28 proverbs chapter 11 verse 28 we read like this those who trust in their riches those who trust in their riches will wither will wither but the righteous will flourish like green leaves but the righteous will flourish like green leaves bible says those who trust in their riches will wither there are some people they are so happy when there is lot of money in the bank or in the pocket in their purse they are very happy but when the pocket is empty they are very restless very angry they disturb they shout at their husband wife children and they are so restless they feel they are in danger because there is no wealth there is no money in the purse because that their whole happiness and enjoyment and protection depends on the money that they have collected that is why some people the moment they have nothing or the moment they feel the money is losing the money is going out of their bank or po- pocket they will become restless disturbed and they will go to any extent to amass wealth in any way so the those who trust in their riches will wither they will never prosper but instead they will wither but the righteous will flourish like green leaves those who are righteous people focus only on jesus not about money money is only secondary but jesus is priority they will be flourishing like green leaves this is what the word of god says let's read let's read deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 17 and 18 This is something which we need to examine our conscience and see do not say to yourself do not say to yourself my power and the might of my own hand my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth have gotten me this wealth the lord says never ever say like this sometimes people say in their home this is my money this is my salary this is my hard work this house is built by me only my money is involved in it and you never invested anything you never contributed anything if you want to live here you have to listen to me if not you get out so these kinds of attitude is shown by many people even against their own family members the lord says do not ever say to yourself forget about telling others you should not even say to yourself that your power and might of your own hand has gotten this wealth for you But remember the Lord your God but remember the Lord your God for it is he who gives you power to get wealth for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth so that so that he may confirm his covenant he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors that is swore to your ancestors as he is doing today as he is doing today if you are 
wealthy if you are getting the blessing if you are getting the prosperity it is because somebody in your ancestry was so connected to god and they were so prayerful and they were so holy and god promised to them the blessings for them and their generations as a result you are getting this blessing as a result you are getting this prosperity therefore you have nothing to be proud of you have nothing to be boast about therefore you make sure that you have something collected spiritually for your next generation otherwise you have nothing to hand over to the next generation you got it because your ancestors were connected to god and god sought to your ancestors and as he as he is today doing today therefore the lord is asking you to be connected to god so that your next generation will be blessed never ever say to yourself that my power and might of my own hand got me this wealth let's examine our conscience and see do we entertain all these kinds of unholiness in our daily day to day life especially desire for money power position name and shortcut way of amassing wealth and gambling and cheating others let's read proverbs chapter 28 verse 20 proverbs chapter 28 verse 20 we read like this the faithful will abound with blessings the faithful will abound with blessings but one who is in a hurry to be rich but one who is in a hurry to be rich will not go unpunished will not go unpunished those who are going for gambling those who are entering into shortcut way of getting wealth those who are wasting lot of money in these kinds of gambling business they are trying they are hurry to be rich the lord says very clearly these things are dangerous for us it will destroy our wealth it is a clear sign that we are so greedy the faithful will abound with blessing if you are faithful in your day to day life your financial area financial matters you will abound with blessings but those who are in hurry to be rich even what you have will be, will be lost we will never flourish we will never grow financially or even spiritually therefore anyone who is interested in entering or you are spending a lot of money in the gambling business whether it's a small scale way or big scale way make sure that you come out of it completely it is going to destroy you and your whole family i have so many examples in front of me when i say this i can see so many people in front of my eyes who have destroyed their life because of gambling i remember their family members i remember the tears that they shared their family members all the hard work all what up the whatever they collected through their hard work everything just vanished just because of these bad habits of gambling the lord says those who are hurry to be rich will not go unpunished we don't need to be hurry to be rich because we don't know how long we are going to live here on earth and all those who are busy trying to get wealth remember maybe some sicknesses or viruses or bacteria is already being formed inside of your body within no time you may even leave have to leave this world there are so many people who amass so much of wealth and they built huge mansions but before entering into their house newly built house they have to leave from this world therefore we need to be aware of all these facts let's read psalm psalm 62 verse 10 psalm 62 verse 10 we read like this put no confidence in extortion put no confidence in extortion and set no vain hopes on robbery and set no vain hopes on robbery if riches increase if riches increase do not set your hearts on them heart do, on them do not set your heart on them put no confidence in extortion and set no vain hopes on robbery if riches increase do not set your heart on them so make sure that all these robbery stealing cheating and all these things are out of your life if you think your richness is increasing let it increase you don't need to focus on it you focus only on jesus the moment richness and prosperity and wealth increases we will have a tendency to get more and more and in this process we may forget the most valuable things of your life that is connection with jesus do not set your heart on them 
Let your heart be on Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. We read like this. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And in their eagerness to be rich. And in their eagerness to be rich. Some have wandered away from the faith. Some have wandered away from the and faith. And pierced themselves with many pains. And pierced themselves with many pains. Most of the problems in this world is because of the desire for money. Eagerness to be very rich. In this process of to, to become eager, eagerness to be rich. Then they, they compromise their spiritual life, compromise their prayer life, compromise their obedience to God, compromise their connection to God and slowly, slowly they will lose faith in God. And as a result, they will start piercing themselves with many pains. There are so many families whom I know personally. Initially, there was a time they used to kneel down and pray a lot. That was the time they had a lot of problems and worries and tension and sickness and all those things. And they were so committed and prayerful and they kneel, used to kneel down together as one family. But later, God blessed them. God gave them job. God gave them money. God gave them salary. God gave them family. God gave them children. And now they are so busy collecting money, collecting wealth. They are so busy in their business and busy running after their worldly things. And slowly, slowly... People are losing faith. Their children are losing faith. And now they have different types of crisis and they have no help. Children are disobedient and creating problems for the parents. Parents are crying and praying for their children. Praying and they are crying and, and going through crisis in their personal life. Because the in between in this process, the eagerness to be rich started controlling them. They've wandered away from their faith. The original faith that they had, they wandered away from it. And now they are going through the pain of it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's examine our conscience and see if we have these tendencies. Let's beg for forgiveness and pardon from the Lord. 